Right, so here we have the new camera from the eye, the T5 Edge, native 4K, wrist remote and voice control. Now I tested the previous eye cameras including the T5e which were really good. This should be a really good camera, I'm looking forward to getting some test clips with it. Let's get it out of the case, get it on charge, put a decent card in and then we can see how it performs. And it's obvious to see when it's charging, you've got a red light there. No doubt when it goes out, it'll be fully charged. And also, it boots up when you plug the USB in, so it's good to turn it off, because they're charged more quickly when they're turned off. Right, well, while the camera's charging, let's see what else you get in the box. First off, you've got the manual. Looks pretty comprehensive, and I notice there's a Wi-Fi app that goes with this camera, so we'll take a look at that later. You've got USB charging cable which you also plug into the camera and plug into your PC to download files. More importantly you've got a wrist remote here which will allow you to stop start the video from a distance and I don't know but presumably it's splash proof and it's on a nice little velcro strap um, and as you can see here the battery is packed separately. You've got a couple of these stick on mounts one flat and one curved plus the slide in brackets camera goes on here in the waterproof case and I notice this one here is a rotating mount Ooh, I can't seem to rotate it because it's very tight but that means you should be able to put this on the side of a helmet or oh, that is tight you should be able to put it on the side of a helmet or on the top of the helmet or anywhere plus you've got spare sticky pads because once you've used these once you peel it off a helmet and put it on another one you can't use it again You've got a couple of those brackets and a couple of the sliding mounts. And the other thing to note about these mounts is, which is not very common, is they've got locking tabs. That brings me conveniently to the waterproof case, which looks nicely made. Don't forget to peel off these little stickers or you'll be complaining about poor quality video. And on the subject of the case, it comes with two backs. It's got a waterproof back and a ventilated back which is a thing to use if you're out motorbiking on a cold day and to change the back you'll see there's a little slot here it's just a question of pushing the old pushing one back out I'm not going to do it but do it very carefully and clicking the new one in just a bit of a tip too when you come to close these things this, the gasket is quite tight so make sure you actually squeeze the back of the case before you do the clip otherwise you may end up breaking the clip it's only happened to me once not with one of these cameras but with another so that takes care of that you've also got a nice soft bag here for keeping it in and a lens cleaning cloth and a couple more little sticky pads not quite sure what these are for right so let's take a closer look at the camera on the front here you've got power stroke mode you've got a couple of LEDs bottom one is blue that shows when you're recording and the top LED is for the Wi-Fi. You've got a 170 degree wide angle lens. Now just to mention, people have suggested this looks a lot like the Acaso V15 new native 4K camera. It does look similar, but this has got voice control and the Eye aren't a clone making company. They make them develop their own cameras. I've tested the Eye 60, which was a good camera, and the T5, which was a great little camera, and also native 4K which is what this is. On this end, to use in conjunction with the mode buttons here, you've got scrolling buttons up and down and a couple of slots for either mic or speaker. Two inch screen on the back, Wi-Fi stroke shutter button on the top. On this end, HDMI out so that with the correct lead you could plug into your TV and, and watch your videos there. Micro USB, card slot. I've put in a 32 gig Samsung Evo, class 10 UHS one which is ultra high speed which is what you need for 4k video and the majority of problems I've seen people commenting on on my YouTube videos where they've had problems with menus and cameras and so on it's usually down to a poor card so make sure you use a good brand class 10 on this end you've got the battery slot as I mentioned that slides out easy enough to put the battery in you've got a little locking tab there which is a bit of a pain in the butt not easy to use and you don't need it quarter inch tripod screw another LED and that covers that so power it up with a short press of the bow button nice little tune and it tells me I'm in video mode with capacity for 
2 hours 29 minutes at 1080 60 because I've just changed it to that default is 4k and at 4k you've got about an hour's recording on the 32 gig card it's in gyro stabilized mode which is what that little symbol will be and the battery's fully charged so press the shutter button got a beep flashing light there shutters flashing most importantly flashing light on the front so that if you're wearing it on a motorcycle helmet in the case you can look in the mirror and see whether you're still recording you've even got an LED flashing on the base here so you certainly know when this is recording press the shutter again and it stopped press the mode button short press and you're in camera mode taking a couple of stills got capacity there for 3800 press the mode button again and I'm into various settings menus so first one is video setting press the shutter once press again I'm into video resolution so if I press again now I can go through and change resolutions press shutter again I'll stick with 108060 image stabilizes the can't say image stabilization that's the gyro stabilization on or off loop recording for car use time lapse video fast motion movie will up the frame rate I think to 120 240 frames a second wind noise reduction sound recording on or off auto low light incidentally when I do my low light test in the pub I usually just use it in default settings drive mode will no doubt start recording as soon as you power it up video scenes there are some effects that you can use and back to video resolution so if I now press mode again I'm back into that menu and I can go to photo settings and change resolution ISO is film speed change it from auto to whatever I want time-lapse photos shooting time burst photos is a series of pictures in one hit a delay timer is for selfie taking long exposures photo scene mode manual indoor outdoor hmm right that probably changes a few settings I just find it much easier to leave things in default mode press mode again back into the main menu press the scrolling button I'm into playback busy there you are I've got some things I've shot there press mode again I'm into camera settings power frequencies 50 or 60 Hertz depending where you are sounds will be beeps on or off white balance auto or you can change it exposure value generally best left on auto distortion correction hopefully takes out the fisheye date stamp on or off or the format so you can turn it off date time change it screensaver is how quickly it shuts down when it's standing by auto power off also is how quickly it actually turns off power on auto record that means when you press on it will start recording straight away pairing the remote reset the Wi-Fi setting language formatting the card system will be default setting no system info will be firmware version card info default settings so I'm, I'm all the way through there so that is all the settings I will take a look at the Wi-Fi app later I will also take a look at the remote but I think that covers using it very straightforward once you get used to it need to take some test clips as well I shall take some at 1080 60 and a couple at 4k but for now that's that as far as the camera goes let's take a look at the remote right so the wrist remote as I mentioned battery is packed separately just need to get either a coin that will fit in that little slot or a screwdriver and turn this the right way which is clockwise oh got a battery in it right so it comes with a spare battery very handy right so I didn't need to do that anyway but now you know so in theory it should power up now unless press and hold the power button 
and yes we have light it needs to be paired first we just turn it off right so that in fact is a spare battery there is already a battery inside remote needs to be paired first so it's a question of powering up scrolling through one two to camera settings and scrolling down to remote pair on press on BT on turn on the device by pressing and holding for three or four seconds and it should start flashing and start scanning and if we wait a bit it should say connected the lights gone solid on that and it says connected so interesting thing I've just discovered is the voice control actually works with the remote so you can either press video on off and as you can see we've started recording there or you can press the camera icon take a still or apparently you can say action camera video and to my astonishment it started flashing and it worked. Action, camera, stop. And I used the wrong command there because it didn't stop. Let's have a look in the book and see what the command is. Or alternatively you can actually turn it off by pressing the remote. That's interesting and it actually worked. And the correct words to use were action, stop shooting. So the voice commands are action start video and it actually started. Can you see that blue light flashing? Action stop shooting. It wasn't so, and it did, it stopped shooting. That's quite remarkable. Action photo. And it changed, it took a photograph. Wow, a remote that actually works with my voice. This is a very useful bit of kit. If you were doing something like mountain biking and needed both hands firmly on your handlebars, just speak to the remote and say, action, start video. And bear in mind, I'm actually holding this uh, a good foot or two away from me and it's still picking up the command. Action, stop shooting. and it didn't that time. You've obviously got to be very clear. Action, stop shooting. Oh well, it, maybe it was luck the first time. Action, stop shooting. And that time it worked. Oh, well that's amazing. Um, I like the idea of that. And incidentally, remotes are usually an extra 10 pounds on with many cameras. So the next thing to do is take a look at the Wi-Fi app and that will be a question of scanning the QR code that I saw in here and installing it, which should be easy enough. I don't know anything about iPhone, so please don't ask, but I'm sure it'll be much the same kind of system. Yeah, oh, in fact, this is, oh, I'm looking at the German language in it now. Wasserdor, yeah. So there you go, there's the, there's the QR code. Download from the App Store or Google Play. So we'll take a look at that in a minute once I've actually got it installed. Oh, and, I'd, and I forgot to say, and to turn this off, press and hold the power button two or three seconds. And it will automatically disconnect as well from the Bluetooth connection there. And of course to turn this off, press and hold two or three seconds. Just like that. Okay, so I'll have a go at installing this Wi-Fi app tend to put this on my old phone which is an old Motorola but you will need a smartphone with at least a quad core processor for these kind of things to work so I've got a QR code scanner in this phone I'll give it a go got it there the i.com oh, of course you can go to Play Store and look for it 
the i camera app uh, that's good oh, it's downloading it's come up in chinese there but i rather hope the app will be in english right so the app's downloaded open file install done open Now you don't press connect yet, because first of all you've got to turn on the Wi-Fi and, and activate it on the camera. So we turn on the camera, press and hold the shutter stroke Wi-Fi button. And sure enough, waiting for Wi-Fi connection. Go into settings and your phone Wi-Fi. It's already on, it's, the eye's already come up there. Show password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Connect. Now somebody complained on one of my other camera tests that that wasn't a very secure password. It's only a password for your camera. It doesn't allow anyone into anything really secret like your computer or your brain. So don't fret too much about it. Connected, no internet. Any second it'll ask me if I really want to connect. And there it is buzzing. Wi-Fi is no internet. Do you want to connect? Yes. And that may be the problem that some people have where phones won't connect because my previous phone was very reluctant to connect unless it found a, an internet connection. OK, so now I can go back to that and press connect. With luck, here we are looking at what the camera is looking at, which is not very interesting, just my table and the junk on it. So, and as you can see, the display has actually gone from the camera. I'll just press a button and see if that you can have both no you can't and in fact you can't start recording with the camera while the connections on so but what you can do is if you look at the app here we are still connected you can stop start remotely counting down and we started recording stop no noise when it stops. I might be a bit too quick for it. Didn't seem to want to stop. It might be the position I've got the phone and the camera in. But too far, too close to each other. Yeah, I think that was the problem. So it does ping when it stops. Press that icon and you're going to switch between camera, stills in other words. Yeah, obviously the pos I'm positioned too close to the, and it's taken a still there. I'm positioned too close to the camera, probably a range of about 10 metres anyway, and sometimes the orientation is important. You've got a kind of timer mode there, I think, which is turned off. Touch that again, I go back into video camera mode. It's a bit slow on my phone. Video camera mode, right, I'm back into that. Or it will be eventually. No, it's still in camp. Yeah, it's still processing. Yeah, it's just a bit slow. It shows me the battery state. It shows me the Wi-Fi signal, which, as I say, is probably not very good because of the orientation. Auto white balance tells me I'm in 1080-60 and that I've got two and a half hours recording time. You've got another symbol there settings which will let you go through and change settings image stabilization on and off video file length app version and so on white balance come out of that and you can also touch this little icon in the corner yes it is slow it's my slow phone and you can view or download your videos on the tablet or phone when you're connected which means if you're out doing an action sport and you're in some remote place you can actually look at them on a tablet which is rather useful so go back to videos and that was the interesting video there I took of my table come back out of that oh you've got another symbol there I'm going too fast for this come back out of that and I'm back into video mode now if you want to come out of it you can either turn the Wi-Fi off press and hold cameras come back to life 
and and that is now dead getting data exception yes of course I think it's time we took a look at some video clips I shall get some around the town if we get a nice sunny day and with some luck if it's not raining I'll get out on my motorbike or I might even get get out and paraglide well I hope that's helpful if you've enjoyed it don't forget to hit subscribe and if you hit the little bell symbol you'll get notified when I upload a video I shall put some more information down in comments below as well so let's get on and look at some video clips Ten eighty sixty uh, EIS. That's gyro stabilisation is on, and it seems to work on four K as well, which is unusual. So as you swing around here, you can see the harbour, and there's good detail on the shop signs here. And this is at four K, and compare that with the ten eighty at sixty. This is another good test shop because you've got some good detail here on the windows on the cottages and the rigging on the boat this is Brixham Harbour and as you can see it's not far off low water because it's winter now so the sun is a bit weak and wintry and watery but I'm making the most of it while the sun's out get some test clips here still at 108060 with the gyro on well this used to be the old fish market here in Brixham Harbour and Brixham is one of the UK's largest fishing ports it's the fishing harbour of course the fish market is now located over there much bigger And this was also part of the old fish market, the covered fish market. Let's see how good it is into the sun. That's right into the sun. That's better I can see. More famous than I am. So this is a this is Nick's lovely hornbill here. Uh, Eric his name is. <laughs> What's his name? Eric. This is Eric, the lovely hornbill. Yeah you'll be you'll be on YouTube again. Yeah, Enjoying your retirement then. Well as soon as I don't think we ever started did we Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> Thanks Nick. Oh, you're welcome. Cheers mate. Have a good day. This is one of my usual low light tests, my local, one of my local pubs. 
it's a 1080 60 bear in mind this does have an auto low light setting and I'm not using it I'm just using it on the standard exposure settings which are all on auto really or default Bear in mind it was very dark in that pub. <laughs> <laughs> 